Inclusion. Creating a feeling of inclusion is essential for building an effective group. Making sure each member gets to know each other will help build a sense of inclusion and make them say things to themselves like, I belong here. An important way to build inclusion is to let everybody know what you expect of them as group members and what they can expect of you as a group facilitator. Establishing group norms will help tremendously in creating a feeling of inclusion. Control. Each member is interested in figuring out how much she or he can influence or control the group and how much the group can control his or her actions. Therefore, the group requires some agreement on the structure of problem solving and decision making. For example, the group will want to come together and decide for how long and at which times breaks will occur for the group throughout the day. By including everyone in this decision making process on when the breaks will happen, it will increase feelings of inclusion and ultimately make people feel safer in the group. Cohesion and connection. Building cohesion and connection in a group is the main task of almost all the skills employed by a group leader. Encouraging group members to accept individual differences will allow for roles and leadership to shift among the group members and help build understandings amongst each other when they're working in different group tasks in different situations. Members in the group will feel more secure and have a level of trust allowing for more feelings to be shared with one another. The communication and the closeness members will feel will start to rapidly increase as cohesion continues to build. Having group members take part in decision making is a great way to help build cohesion and connection. When a decision is made from a group consensus where all members are taking responsibility and committed to seeing something in the group happen, it again will quickly increase the feelings of connection. Theoretical underpinnings, the theory of self-efficacy, and how behavioral change can happen. When a person is feeling confident about their skills, it has a much greater chance their behaviors will change. Coming in to a learning environment, if a person is given an opportunity to perform and experience feedback showing that they have mastered the skills, it will enhance their self-efficacy and allow for a greater amount of behavioral change to occur. For example, a traditional male comes in to a group counseling session. This person has been brought up in a society and a family life that highly values stoicism and suppression of their emotions to get through tough situations. This group member has taken the learned behavior of suppressing their feelings and applied it to all walks of life. It's made them very successful in their business career. However, when it comes to family relationships, their wife often describes them as being emotionally distant and unable to connect. The group member has felt self-esteem go up because they've been rewarded by their family and their work environment for suppressing their feelings, yet it's causing conflicts in their life that's led them to come to group counseling. Simply telling them to start talking about their feelings more will not affect the desired behavior change of opening up to their spouse. Instead, giving this group member a chance to practice sharing what's going on inside for them in a small but gradual way and getting feedback from other group members will help them feel more confident and feel that they've started to master the skill of expressing what's going on inside for them. This will lead to more self-efficacy, more self-esteem around the skills of sharing, ultimately leading to a more long-lasting behavioral change. The Jahari Window this is a tool that can help for shared discovery. It allows a person to disclose more about themselves and learn how receiving feedback from others can lead to greater understanding. Let's start 
in the top left box in blue. This open free area includes things, feelings, thoughts, ideas a person has that are known to themselves and known by others. For example, if a person is speaking English, they know themselves that they're capable of speaking the English language. Other people watching them will also understand that they can speak English. Moving to the bottom left. This hidden area are things only known by a person themselves and not known by others. For example, a person may have gone to school in another country. Others looking at this person might not know that about them and may assume they've been educated where they currently live. Only by a person self-disclosing to other people that they attended school in another country will other people know this about themselves. Moving to the right of the Jahari window, the blind area. These are things unknown by a person, but often known by others. For example, a person may be a very good listener, but they've never been told that by anyone. By people within a group context, giving feedback that they experience that person as a very good listener will help the person understand something about themselves. The point of the Jahari window is to demonstrate as group members disclose about themselves and receive feedback from other group members, it will increase the area in the middle of shared discovery, where a group member is learning more about themselves and how people witness and experience them, and group members start to learn more about the unknown areas of a group member as they self-disclose. The last box in the bottom right is the unknown area. This is the area where a group member is not aware of themselves and others looking inward are also unknown. A goal of a cohesive and smooth group is to have group members decrease their unknown areas as much as possible and create more opportunities for shared discovery. This can greatly help a person's self-esteem, feeling of inclusion, and safety in an effective group.